morning. Uh, just so you know that starting today, the ushers will be coming around with the collection baskets each Sunday. Um, and the second collection today is for the parish maintenance fund. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome those who are joining us on our live stream mass at the 11 a.m. mass at uh, St. Ursula's Church in Parkville, Maryland. We gather in faith this day with the church throughout the world to celebrate the Eucharistic liturgy of the third Sunday of Easter. It is an opportunity for us to continue our reflection and to renew our experience of the mystery of the, incar of the uh, resurrection and to acknowledge the presence of the risen Christ who is with us. Our readings today remind us that the resurrection is about forgiveness. It accomplishes the work of God's mercy on the face of the earth through the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And it calls us to embrace that work and to live lives empowered by God's mercy to continue that work on the face of the earth. We continue by entrusting ourselves into the powerful and the merciful presence of our God. Lord Jesus, you are risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us the great experience of your peace, and you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and the Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, 
but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name, to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In 1965, the singer-songwriter Jackie DeShannon recorded and performed a song which was entitled, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. It was very popular, was on the charts for a long time, because in the midst of the civil unrest, the unrest on campuses throughout the world, the civil unrest in our country, the Vietnam War, Certainly, we needed something. And as she expressed it, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It was popular because it's touched a chord in our culture, in our lived experience in the world, and in our nation. I was thinking about that song as I was reflecting on our readings for today's Mass. And I began to think, now, 
If you were going to write a song like that today, what would you identify as the world needing the most? And as I thought about these readings, it seemed to me that what they say is what the world needs now is forgiveness, the action of God's mercy touching its heart and its soul, bringing healing and wholeness to the world, to our nation, to our church, to our lives. Because forgiveness is a very scarce commodity today. We have plenty of terrorism, plenty of violence, plenty of anger, plenty of the taking and disrespect of life. We have all of that, but we have very little forgiveness. What the world needs now is forgiveness in the act of God's mercy. And on this third Sunday of Easter, we are assured that the mercy of God and forgiveness is in our midst for us to experience, for us to be converted by, transformed by, and for us to bring to our world. We reflect on the gospel today, and I think there are a couple of things to notice about this gospel. There are two echoes in this gospel passage that we read today of previous Easter, uh, Easter gospels. The first echo is that uh, echo of that gospel story earlier in Luke, of the gospel's encounter of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, where they spend an afternoon walking with him, not recognizing him, and then having a meal in the breaking of bread they recognize him. He is present to them. That same Lord present to them, present in that room that we read about today, is with us in the Eucharist where we break bread. Do we realize that the resurrection of Jesus was not some past event, some his, but a present reality? The mystery of the risen Christ present with us in the breaking of the bread, traveling with us on the way of our lives. Oftentimes we don't recognize him. But in the Eucharist, we're called to recognize him and to walk his way and let his way be our way. The second echo of a reading that we hear in the uh, gospel today is from last Sunday. When Jesus says to Thomas, you want to believe in me? Then here are the marks in my hands and my feet. Come experience them. Put your fingers in them. Put your hand in my side. Experience salvation, the marks of salvation, the marks of the work of God's mercy. Believe. Jesus does the same thing in the upper room today. We read that he says, see this, I'm not a ghost. I'm not the living dead. I'm no zombie. I'm a living reality. Watch this. I'll have a meal before you. A living reality in that room and a living reality in our lives. The risen Christ traveling with us teaching us, guiding us, understanding us, loving us, continuing to bring the work of God's mercy into our hearts and our souls and our spirits, strengthening us, giving us a wisdom to live by so that we can be his missionary disciples who continue that act of God's mercy and bring it to our world. We might ask ourselves, why is there so little forgiveness in the world? And I would suggest to you that the reason there is little forgiveness in the world is that it's hard work. It's very, very hard work. And if you doubt that, then all you need to do is look at a crucifix. All you need to do is to see the wounds of Christ. That is how hard the work of forgiveness is. But the good news for us 
is that Jesus has done that work already. He has suffered. He has died. He has risen. He is with us so that we can know the joy of the action of God's mercy in our lives so that we can know the strength and the wholeness that comes from being forgiven by God. On that cross, Jesus reconciled the world, all creation, all times. Times before us, our times, and times in the future. All reconciled on that cross through the action of God's mercy. Offering forgiveness, healing, strength, encouragement, and hope to all who believe, to all who recognize his presence in their midst, to all who seek it. Forgiveness is hard work. I would suggest to you that the first work of forgiveness when you have difficulty with a person, when you see something that needs healing, is prayer. You need to pray for yourself, and you need to pray for the other person or persons. And you need to pray so that you will have the eyes and the heart as they will have the eyes and the heart of the mercy of God. That you will be able to see each other, see other people in the way that God sees us. Because once you get that vision, once you get that vision, then you can take the step of doing the work of forgiveness, of reconciliation, and of hope. And secondly, there's a thing about mercy that we have to be converted to. We really have to set our hearts on it. We need to seep our spirits in it. We need to believe in it and know that it's at work within us. Because only when it is in wor at work within us can we do the work of bringing it to our world? And so, it's that hard work of conversion. Perhaps changing our attitudes, changing our minds, changing the way we think about people, the way we see others. Moving away from the need for vengeance or the need or our own fear of others. Moving away from that. Trusting in the power of God's love, grace, and mercy that was victorious on the cross on Calvary and is victorious on the cross in our lives. As Jesus appears in the midst of his disciples, he always says after the resurrection, peace be with you. The peace of Christ, not just the absence of tension or stress, or violence, not just the absence of it, but the well-being of the presence of Christ and the power of God's love and the action of his mercy is what the resurrection is about. It is about Christ bringing us that rich peace that the world does not give, but that can only be found in the love and the mercy of God. Jesus with us now in the breaking of the bread. Jesus with us now, in the wounds of the cross, which are really signs of the victory of God's mercy and the strength of his love. Jesus with us now offers us that peace, not just for ourselves, but so that we can bring that peace to our world. So that we can bring that peace to the world, to our country, to our church, to our families, to our friends, to our business places, wherever we go, we should be bearing the peace of Christ, which is the end product of the mercy of God at work in our lives through the risen Christ. In that room with his disciples, he tells them in the end, you are witnesses of this. You have seen the victory of God's grace, love, and mercy when you witness me suffering and dying and now rising and in your midst. You have seen it. You have experienced 
the well-being of being loved and forgiven and strengthened by the mercy of God. Now, he says, you are the witnesses. Go and tell the world. Go and be the peace of Christ and help others find their way to it. He's with us in the Eucharist today, and he says the same thing to you and to me. You are witnesses. You have experienced forgiveness. You have experienced mercy. You have seen it at work in the church. You have seen it at work in your own life. Now, go. And in your life, in the actions that you do every day, in the words that you speak, in the attitudes that you hold in your heart, go and be those witnesses that help others discover the presence of the risen Christ in their midst and the action of God's mercy in their lives through the lives that we live and the good works that we do in the name of Christ. <clears throat> God's holy word forms and fashions us in faith. Having heard this life-giving word, let us profess together the faith we share and seek to live fully each day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us open our hearts and entrust our cares and needs and those of our church and our world to the Lord in prayer. For peace and for justice in our world, for an end to war, terrorism, and violence, let us pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis, for Archbishop Lori, for all who share the ministry of the church, may they be faithful to the call to, to bear the peace of Christ throughout the world through their ministry of mercy and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For a full appreciation of the gift of ministry within our church, for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and lay ecclesial ministry, we pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and stand in the need of the touch of Christ the healer, May they find hope, strength, and encouragement in their illness, and may the Lord restore them to the fullness of health. Let us pray to the Lord. For married couples, that they may have the wisdom and courage to support each other, helping one another grow and develop their skills and talents to become all that God calls them to be. Let us pray to the Lord. For those serving in the armed forces, 
in law enforcement, emergency responders, and for those in health care, for the continued growth of peace and freedom in troubled parts of our world, let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry and the homeless, the abandoned and the abused, for the marginalized and the disenfranchised, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For Emmanuel McLarnon and Robert Bindle, for whom this Mass is being celebrated, let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray. Good and gracious God, we bless and praise your name. We trust in your mercy and your love, which endure forever. Hear our prayers and know the needs of our hearts. We entrust them to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable by God, the Almighty Father. The praise and glory of his name. For our good and good laws, my church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for yourself. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Ursula, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The first gift of the risen Christ to the church was the gift of his peace. Let us be mindful of the peace of Christ that is with us in this Eucharist, that we might bring that peace in his name to our world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Praise 
We join now with those who are with us on a live stream in a prayer of spiritual communion. Please repeat after me. My Jesus, My Jesus. I believe that you are present, that you are present. In, the most holy of the in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, <clears throat> and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. In this time of pandemic, we continue to pray for the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. There are a few announcements um, this morning. We are continuing to sell raft raffle tickets for our spring raffle after all masses. Tickets are also available online. Tickets will be sold throughout April, with winners chosen throughout May. Winners are based on the Maryland Pick 3 lottery numbers. The Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a regional holy hour and Marian retreat on Saturday, May the 15th, here at St. Ursula. Mass will begin at 8.30. The holy hour will follow until 10 a.m., and there will be a Marian retreat until 2 p.m. More information will be forthcoming. We remind you that we will be celebrating the sacrament of First Holy Communion over the next few weeks with larger groups occurring on Saturday mornings. Some families have chosen for their children to receive this sacrament during our regularly scheduled weekend masses. Please keep in mind these Masses will have extra people in attendance. Uh, next week at this Mass, we are delighted to announce that six of our children will be making their first Holy Communion. In anticipation of this, we'll be offering overflow seating in the Spiritual Center, where the Mass will be live-streamed and Holy Communion will be distributed. No reservations will be taken, and we suggest that you plan to arrive early to secure a seat in the main church. Thank you for your attention. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go proclaim the Gospel of the Lord.